Imagine yourself covered by an avalanche, disconnected from the environment, not knowing which way is up or down, and no possibility to activate your motor function to call for help. This is the way some patients perceive the environment after a severe brain lesion and after waking up of coma. So the acute development of the management in the intensive care led us to have the surviving of patients which five years ago would have died. Nevertheless, certain reanimated patients only wake up slowly. And to rehabilitate these patients, we created an acute neurorehabilitation unit at the SHUF. As a neurologist, I am in charge of this team. And now we are confronted with evaluating the patient's level of consciousness already in the intensive care and to make the prognosis of the patient's potential of rehabilitation. There are several levels of consciousness. The deep coma with patient eye closed, no sign of perception of his body and of the external stimuli. And then vegetative states. The patient is awake, the eyes are open, but he interacts not at all with his environment. And from these patients and these states of consciousness, we have to differentiate the so locked, locked in as the well-known French journalist Jean-Dominique Bobby, who wrote in his autobiography The Diving Bell and the Butterfly in French called Le Scaphandre et le Papillon. He was completely awake and aware, but he has a complete paralysis of all the limbs and the facial muscles, and the only way to communicate was by eyes, and so he could write his book. Other patients in minimal conscious state don't move at all, not even the eyes. But they may have a, level, a certain level of consciousness or perceptions. So it's very difficult for these kind of patients to evaluate their capacity of perception and to understand better the activity from this cerebral uh, type uh, of perception got our focus of our research. Now you will see four short extracts of a recent broadcast of a Swiss television in order to give you a better understanding of the management of the patient's acute situation at the SHIF, but also the limits and the necessity to find solutions. Time is brain. And at Lausanne, now you can in 10 minutes be reanimated and transferred to a state-of-the-art intensive care unit. But uh, not all patients, in spite of a very good optimal intensive care and neurosurgery interventions, will survive. Yes, but sometimes they don't even wake up. They are there, but they don't wake up. They don't wake up. So you need an interprofessional team to make the difficult decision on continuing or on stopping the maximum active treatment and the neurorehabilitation. Acute neurorehabilitation consists in giving neurointensive stimulation. For instance, the physiotherapist or ergotherapist can already mobilize passive these patients when they are still in bed and in coma. And we can use a robot. So here you will see a patient who is trained by a robot and he is imitating walking by stepping movements and verticalization gives the impression of standing. And then this can be associated 
to a very comfortable and sensitive stimulation by the nurses and physiotherapists. Ah, uh, still, okay. Uh, nevertheless, to predict the outcome of a coma patient remains difficult, especially after severe brain injury. So here you will see Giuseppe, he, after three years of a traffic road accident, already in the acute care, the prognosis was considered bad and without hope to regain an independent life. No sounds, so it's better you can, I can talk and to explain you that this patient had an uncle and the uncle some months ago had also suffered from a severe brain injury and recovered well. So the family kept all their hope up for Giuseppe and asked us to continue intensive rehabilitation in spite of the clinical and radiological signs of a bad outcome. So now you see here Giuseppe, three years afterwards, he's still in minimal conscious state and he can interact actively with his environment. So it's different for another patient you will see in the next video and then you will have the sound because it's impressive how he's talking and his wife. This patient was reanimated 45 minutes and initially his prognosis was as bad as the other patient because there was no movement and no signs of interaction except he reacted very quickly on pain stimulation. After the transfer from the intensive care to our acute uh, neuroplantation unit, he got intensive neurostimulation and 24 hours afterwards, he interacted with his wife. So listen to the couple, how they felt it. Vous vous souvenez de ces moments-là où vous avez tendu les lèvres, par exemple Ou que C'est une période de brouillard absolu. Total, oui. J'ai une phrase terrible des médecins. Votre mari sera deux yeux. C'est une phrase qui, encore maintenant, elle est horrible. Je dis deux yeux, veut dire quoi Vous êtes encore avec deux yeux qui vont être ouverts. The understanding of consciousness has been modified the last five years by proving that non-responsive patients considered to be in a so-called vegetative state have the same cerebral activity as normal person. So also our research was fundamentally influenced by Stephen Loris, our colleague, his work in this domain in Liège. Stephen succeeded in showing by functional RMI that a patient in a so-called vegetative state when asked to imagine himself to playing tennis, he activated the same cerebral areas as a normal person. Nevertheless, the percentage of misdiagnosis is still very high. 43% of 40 patients supposed to stay in a vegetative state finally showed interaction with this environment. And these results from a study in 96 already of Andrews was confirmed even in 2008 by Stephen Lurie's in spite of all the advances in neuroimagery and neurophysiology. So we want to diminish the percentage of misdiagnosis and we want to show some solutions. First of all, we have to 
ask why it's so difficult to make the diagnosis and the evaluation of a state of consciousness. When you want to express your feeling and your perception, what's going on, what do you do? You use facial muscles, eye movements and gestures. And uh, when the person in front of you wants to understand you, they will interpret and analyze your gestures, your tools of communication. That's communication. So, when you feel my talk boring or exciting, I will see it on your facial muscles and I have a immediate feedback. And you see some politicians as this ex-president, he knows very well to use these tools in a in professional intention. So, to perceive what's going on around, no, in, around us and to perceive the environment, this needs a correct functioning in brain of at least one entrance point of the five senses. And then when you want to answer to this perception and to sensory inputs, these sensory inputs and also the cognition has to be connected to the zones in the four lobes where is coming on the controlling of motor activity. So when these zones in got the interconnection and the information, the sensory information and the cognitive information, then can the movements be controlled by this zone of brain and then you can move facial muscles, limbs and eyes. The disconnection of the neural network is one of the first reason of misdiagnosis. Now with tractography, a special techniques of MRI, you can show that after a brain lesion, the lobes can completely be intact and the associated fibers connecting these lobes are destroyed when you have, for instance, a vegetative state here in the temporal lobe. So, in this case, you have a patient, he can have his whole capacity of cognition and sensory perception but because of the interrupted disconnection, exclude any motor response to the stimuli. So, the golden standard of diagnosis remains clinical evaluation. Two conditions have to be respected. First, you have to leave time, to bring time to the patient to perceive the stimuli and to react to the stimuli. You see, this was five seconds of silence and four times more than that, it means 20 seconds, the evaluator has to wait in order to analyze the reaction of the patient. That is necessary to know that this brain lesion patient needs time. Secondly, the five senses has, have to be stimulated repeatedly and in a very motivating way. So I give you just a, an event from the last week I was in my unit and tried to evaluate and stimulate a patient, a patient he was president from a football club, no movement, no eye movement, no reaction, and then my colleague came, and my colleague is a football fan, he stimulated the patient in asking what's going on with the oil much, and suddenly the patient smiled, slowly, but he smiled and told her that he would like to see a match. 
So you see, this all stimulus should be so motivating. But this is a challenge and difficult to realize in an acute environment of acute hospital. So we have to ask how we can improve communication and motivation of these kind of patients using brain-computer interface. We already explored this research with the group of Professor Abraham here of the APFL, but for especially very disabled patients. And now we adapt our experience for the coma patients. So when you have a person or a patient, he will count a chosen letter flashed on a screen we can record the activity by EEG. And several times the patient counts the letter and EEG amplifier will record a positive wave, so-called event-related potential, pre-300. And this is the condition to activate a computer and to go up with the information to an environment control, which controls a lamp. So you here will see this screen. Here on the screen, the letters are flashed very frequently, only L, very rarely. So rarely enough, when the patient counts it, and after several times, this patient, he has no motor activity, no eye movements, was able to light on the lamp. And you will see, this was a very moving, moving moment for the patient and for the evaluator. He could now switch on a lamp only by brain. This is a very new environment control for patients, they have the capacity to express their own needs in spite of no motor activity. So, further research in this new and exciting domain in collaboration with interprofessional specialists and international clinic and on fundamental groups will enable us to help us to find the best way to bring the right patient at the right time to the right place. Thank you very much.